Right now, the Madison School Board will look to fill a vacant seat next week after a longtime member announces she's stepping down. And a new warning out for dog owners that your pet's treats could make you sick from salmonella. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Hain. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Friday as the 4th of July weekend continues. Hot and humid. Scattered showers today. Sound familiar? Let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield has a look at your first alert forecast. I'm getting tired of this weather. Me too. I feel like my name should be Pete as in Pete and repeat because we are just in the same weather pattern with the heat and humidity building up throughout the morning and early afternoon hours and then scattered showers and thunderstorms forming in the afternoon and evening. And that's exactly what we're seeing play out today on high resolution Doppler. We see some showers and thunderstorms just over the Illinois state line, but some downpours certain to shut up, uh, set up across Rock County into Jefferson and Dodge County. So have that umbrella ready to go at a moment's notice this afternoon. Madison, we're seeing those cumulus clouds build in the sky on the WIC TV sky cam. Temperatures are in the mid 80s in Madison and at 90 already in Janesville. Maybe a few more degrees added to the temperature in Madison. It just depends on where exactly that cold front goes, but it still feels like the upper 90s in Janesville, feeling like the triple digits in Mineral Point and 92 in Madison. So as these thunderstorms start to build more, there is a higher chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon and into portions of early Saturday. After that, though, I get to talk about some improvements to the forecast, so I'm excited about that. And we'll uh, go for a more deep dive into those forecast improvements in your first look forecast. We like the word improvement. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a few minutes. Right now, Janesville police are looking for a man they say fired shots into the air as they were trying to arrest him. On Monday night, officers responded to a disturbance on Academy Street northwest of Mon Monterey Park. According to a release, when officers tried to arrest 39-year-old Antonio Sims, he pulled a gun from his waistband and fired three shots into the air. Police say they recovered the gun and shell casings nearby, but Sims is still not in custody. Madison police say several people burglarized a home and stole a car early this morning. It happened off Mineral Point Road in the neighborhood near Cardinal Glen Park. Police say a homeowner saw several people attempting to enter parked cars. When officers arrived, the suspects drove off. An initial investigation showed that the thieves found a garage door opener in one unlocked car. They used it to enter a 61-year-old man's home, then took his keys from inside and stole his vehicle. New at noon, Madison School Board member Mary Burke announced today that she will step down from her position. In a statement, Burke said after seven years of service, her personal and professional commitments do not allow her the time and energy needed to fulfill her term. Board President Gloria Ray said Burke's commitment has been undeniable and thanked her for being a steady leader and dedicated public service. The school board will disclose, will discuss that is, filling the vacant seat at its meeting Monday night. Wisconsin insurance officials will consider a proposal to lower insurance rates for workers' compensation. The Wisconsin Compensation Rating Bureau has proposed an almost 9% decrease, continuing a three-year trend in falling premiums. The new rates could go into effect October 1st. Some employers say a small decline in reported injuries and illnesses has helped bring the rates down. The U.S. economy added 224,000 jobs in June, a strong comeback for the labor market after a disappointing May. The unemployment rate rose to 3.7 percent. That's the highest level since March of 2019, but still historically low. Analysts had forecasted a drag on jobs due to uncertainty around trade tensions and a lackluster housing market. 335,000 people entered the labor force in June, substantially more than usual. The Justice Department has until this afternoon to tell a federal judge whether it'll try to find a new way to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. This comes after the Supreme Court ruled last week against the Trump administration's justification for adding it. Natalie Brand has the latest from the White House. President Trump left the White House Friday to spend the weekend at his New Jersey Country Club, leaving Justice Department lawyers to continue his fight to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. We have four or five ways we can do it. 
The Supreme Court rejected the Commerce Department's rationale for the question last week, seemingly ending the issue with time running out to print the forms. Justice Department lawyers told a federal judge on Tuesday the fight was over, and in a statement, the Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross said the Census Bureau has started the process of printing the decennial questionnaires without the question. But then the president tweeted Wednesday that the administration is absolutely moving forward with the question, prompting a scramble at the Justice Department to find a workaround. The president says the White House is looking at every option to add the question that could include an executive order. We can start the printing now and maybe do an addendum after we get a positive decision. So we're working on a lot of things, including an executive order. We don't need to continue to fight this out in court. We need them to just drop the case. Census figures affect many issues, including federal funding and congressional districts. Critics argue asking about citizenship could discourage some immigrants from filling out the census, leaving that population undercounted and giving an advantage to Republicans when it comes to redistricting. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. The census is also used to distribute federal funds for schools, Medicaid benefits, and highway repairs. After Southern California's strongest earthquake in 20 years, it produced more than 100 aftershocks. The 6.4 magnitude quake in Ridgecrest sent items flying off the shelves at local businesses, caused roads to crack, and a house to go up in flames. It was one of the largest quakes to hit Southern California since the 1994 Northridge earthquake. As aftershocks continue today, crews will be out assessing damage. A new warning for pet owners, the CDC and FDA are investigating an outbreak of salmonella infections linked to contact with pig-eared dog treats. The FDA says salmonella discovered in pig-eared treats can infect people either from handling the treats or directly from your dog once he becomes ill. Pet Supply Plus has recalled these Treats sold individually in its stores, but pre-packaged ones have not been recalled. So far, 45 people in 13 states, including Illinois and Michigan, have been diagnosed with salmonella-related illness. And one more win will give the U.S. women's soccer team its second straight World Cup. The U.S. beat England 2-1 in Tuesday's semifinal. The first goal came fast and early for the U.S., but soon England got even. Then U.S. co-captain Alex Morgan pushed her team ahead, again celebrating as if she were taking a sip of the most British of beverages, tea. After lots of rough plays and a crucial save by goalie Alyssa Nair on the penalty kick, Team USA handed fans... Another victory. Like getting emotional. Um, it means everything. I mean, as someone who like I'm, I played soccer all my life. So watching my heroes like live, fulfill my dream is unreal. If Team USA wins a fourth World Cup trophy in the final on Sunday, it'll make history. The game against the Netherlands is at 10 a.m. our time against Sunday morning. There's more to come on New Street now at noon. Up next, we'll see what's happening in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today, we've got a way to turn yesterday's leftovers into gold. Come on, join us so you don't miss a thing.
I hope you had a great fourth. If you're like me, you'll probably have a bunch of leftovers to eat up over the next few days. You know, when I saw how many hamburger and hot dog buns I had left, I knew I needed to come up with a way to use them. So let me show you what we did. The first thing we do is combine some softened cream cheese with a bit of mayo, dry ranch dressing mix, and some shredded cheddar cheese. We give this a stir, and once it comes together, we spread it over some hot dog or hamburger buns that we split in half. You wanna make sure you're generous with this so every bite is nice and cheesy. Right before you're ready to serve them, place them in the oven and bake them until the cheese mixture is all melty and the edges of the buns begin to brown. What a great way to turn leftover buns into something that everyone will be asking for seconds or even thirds of. These are so good, you'll probably be adding hamburger and hot dog buns to your grocery list all year long. To get the recipe for our rancher style cheese buns, simply visit our website. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an ooey gooey leftover way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Howard, thank you. Another hot, sticky day outside, but this weekend we're going to uh, cool off with highs in the upper 70s. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield has your first alert forecast coming up. Climate change is changing the way winemakers operate, and Costco sees a spike in its fashion items. Wendy Gillette has your Money Watch report. The markets opened lower after a record-breaking day Wednesday. Investors got new employment numbers from the Labor Department. 224,000 new jobs were created last month, which is better than expected. The unemployment rate actually went up a tenth, of a percent as more people started looking for work. It's now at 3.7 percent. Climate change is impacting all different aspects of our planet. Now add wine to the list. Warmer springs are bringing more humid air and rain to Europe. 
That means winemakers increasingly have to use pesticides to ward off pests and diseases. European grapes, including Chardonnay, Riesling, and Pinot Noir, are more delicate and often need several doses of pesticides. Costco members are joining the club not only for bulk foods and household items, but for fashion, too. According to a report from Fast Company, sales of clothes and shoes at the wholesale retailer have increased 9% yearly for the past four years, more than food and electronic sales. Brand names like Tory Burch, Jessica Simpson, and Calvin Klein are sold at discounted prices and can be found alongside the warehouse store's in-house brand, Kirkland. Car lovers, this story is for you. Ford is introducing a new version of its GT supercar, the GT MK2. The downside, it'll cost $1.2 million, and you can't even drive the car on public roads. It's only intended for tracks, and just 45 of them will be built. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Wendy Gillette. Thank you, Wendy. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 60 points. Despite those job number reports, the NASDAQ off almost 30. The S&P 500 down 10. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke is off today. So here are your farm numbers. Time now for weather. Dave's over in the weather center. Keep the umbrella handy. Yes, uh, because we already have showers and thunderstorms developing across southern Wisconsin once again. In this heat and humidity, stop me if you've heard this before, we get the morning hours of sunshine building up that heat and humid air still in town. Then we get showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. So we've really just been pressing the repeat button with this forecast over the last week or so, but changes and positive changes are coming by the time we get to late tomorrow into Sunday and Monday. So we do have showers and thunderstorms uh, forming right along that Wisconsin Illinois state line, and you can kind of see where a cold front is across the area. It's already gone through spots like the Dells, so it does feel a little bit cooler north and west of Madison. But even so, some scattered showers and thunderstorms possible this afternoon and evening. So have the umbrella ready to go over the next couple of hours. I think we'll probably be dry for portions of the overnight hours, but by the time we get to tomorrow morning and early afternoon, we may need that umbrella briefly once again before dry weather hits us as we head into Sunday and Monday. A live look in Madison at the WIC TV sky cam. You can see those cumulonimbus clouds billowing in the sky there, just taking the energy that the atmosphere is giving it and producing some uh, bigger clouds and maybe some more thunderstorms over the next couple of hours. Temperatures are in the mid 80s. We already made it to 86 today, so we really warmed up quickly this morning, but that dew point 73 degrees. That is oppressive, tropical, whatever word you want to use. Gross is another one that we can use. It feels a little bit more like the low to mid 90s across much of southern Wisconsin. So other temps 84 in Watertown, 88 in Janesville, 86 in Mineral Point. But with those dew points, oh boy, extending into the mid 70s across southwestern Wisconsin. Yuck. We are feeling like 92 in Madison, 91 in Monroe, 95 in Mineral Point. We're actually feeling a little bit better than we were just a few minutes ago because of those showers and thunderstorms. So if we do get those to, de uh, to develop over your location, count yourselves lucky because that will at least help a little bit with how it feels outside. Temporarily, that is. But we will feel better as we get into the weekend and early next week with temperatures near 80, less humidity. That humidity does return for the middle of next week. So on
on future track. Isolated to scattered showers and thunderstorms possible this afternoon and evening. Then a bit of a break as temperatures fall into the upper 60s. By the time we get to tomorrow morning, some showers and thunderstorms with some downpours possible. And then into the early afternoon, they still could be hanging around southern Wisconsin. By the time we get to Sunday, though, I think we are dry across southern Wisconsin. We have a northerly wind helping keep us dry and keep us a little bit cooler as well with highs in the 70s instead of the 80s and 90s. So that's a big difference, but also the difference in humidity will be palpable. It really, uh, you'll notice it as you step out the door. So at least we have some nice weather to look forward to on Sunday and Monday because this humidity day after day has been getting <laughs> tough to get through, that's for sure. And I think we uh, will see that nice weather hang around for the most part until we get into the middle of next week. Well, if you ever want to live in Miami, you know what it's like. Exa I mean, why why get an expensive plane ticket <laughs> and head down there when just you can the, just step outside? Just open the windows. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dave. A piece of ancient Egyptian history was auctioned off, and there's a fight to get it back. Why Egypt says the sculpture of the famous King Tut was stolen. That's next. A piece of ancient Egypt's past was auctioned off in London despite protests in modern-day Cairo. A sculpture of King Tut's head was sold at Christie's for $6 million. Egypt claims the relic of the famed pharaoh was stolen. Here's Charlie Daggett. After 3,000 years, it's showing somewhere in tear, but it's definitely the face of the world's most famous pharaoh. As you can see here, the eyes, the eyebrows are completely carved. The lips are extremely sensual. If only those extremely sensual lips could talk. Maybe he could explain how he found himself on an auction block today at Christie's. Zahi Hawass is Egypt's former minister of antiquities. They never tell us about the origin, about how they bought it from Egypt, whose ownership of this piece. They have no evidence of that, but we do. 
think that this is a part of our heritage. The story begins in the 1920s when British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered King Tut's tomb. Christie's contends the bust has been under the ownership of a private collection in Germany since 1985, after passing through several hands since the 1960s. Up close, it is exquisite and instantly recognizable as the face of King Tut. Now, Christie's say ancient objects like this are by their nature impossible to trace back thousands of years. Christie's head of antiquities, Letitia Delaloy, says the auction house has done everything it could to prove its provenance. Christie's is at the forefront um, of, for the protection of historical objects. Um, this piece has been widely uh, published and exhibited. It's a very well-known piece. So there hasn't been any claim on the piece, mm -hmm. and we haven't received any evidence um, from the Egyptian authorities uh, about the problem. But while Egyptian authorities have failed to stop the sale, they haven't stopped their battle. We will fight until the head of Tutankhamun, our great famous king, should come back. The great, famous king won't be coming back anytime soon. Today, Egypt's child king is under new ownership. Charlie Daggett, CBS News, London. A story. David, was one final check of the forecast. Yeah, the humidity has been the story around here for the last week or so, or has it been the last year or so? It's tough to tell, but we do have more showers and thunderstorms uh, out and about across southern Wisconsin this afternoon, so grab the umbrella if you are heading out, and then more shower and thunderstorm chances into tomorrow. We do get some improvement in the humidity department by the time we get to Sunday. All right, we'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon, everyone.